Remember how sometimes you're looking through your room to find something and you just can't locate it even though it was right under your nose. You were just not looking hard enough. I'm a sexuality educator by profession and I am amazed by how many myths prevail on this topic of sex and sexuality despite the internet. And of course sometimes because of it. I am here to uncover those myths nobody wants to talk about and to answer your frequently unanswered queries. The first myth that I would like to speak about today is that size matters. Yes. In today's times when pornographic films have influenced our young men and women, they showing the sizes in these films is so unreal. It is absolutely not real. And then to talk this myth about sizes becoming an important part of pleasuring each other during the sexual act now acts upon our young mind. This becomes an experience for them and this affects their relationship. Yes, body image is important as well as it plays an important role in sexual relationships. If you don't have a positive body image about yourself, if you are not confident about yourself, your relationship, especially the sexual relationship, is going to get affected. Let's talk quickly about the penal length first. 85% of the women have said that they are okay, they're absolutely fine with their partner's penis size. 55% of the men themselves are also okay and satisfied with their own penis size. Now in another research, 21% of the women said that yes, the penal length is important for me. Only 1% said it's very important. But surprisingly, it is the 32% of these women who said that the girth is more important than the length of the penis. So my dear men, instead of focusing on your own penal size, if you could focus a little bit on the art of love making, I am sure you will rule the bedroom. Why? Because most of the times, the women need the clitoral stimulation and not just the penetration. And we would have known that if the education was done right. Which brings me now to discuss a little bit about the normal, uh, generally observed penal length. So the average penis size is about three and a half inches when flaccid, 5.1 inches when erect. Now the vaginal length is about two and a half inches to three inches. Yes, when a woman is aroused, there's more blood flowing into the vagina, which causes the vagina to elongate a little bit. And the cervix, which is the tip of the uterus, slightly lifts itself to make more room for the penis, for the finger, or the sex toy, just to be able to fit in. So now when we know what the average vaginal length is, approximately about four and a half to five inches, we do not have to work towards a six or an eight inch. The art of love making is the point. <clears throat> now this brings me to the next is about the breast size. So the, the world's most desired supermodels or the world's most beautiful women are flat chested and not ample in size. But that does not affect their desirability. So your confidence and your talent is going to take you places and not your body image. Right? That brings me to my second myth which is double protection. So many of us think, which is such a ridiculous notion we find nowadays, that wearing two condoms is better than one, more protection. <laughs> no. What will happen is the condom creates friction and that leads to breaking, which leads to leakage. And that's exactly what you didn't want. So what you need is not a double layer, but what you need is a double method. And when I speak about double method, we're talking about contraceptive methods. So maybe it could be a condom with an IUD or a condom with a patch, or it could also be a condom with a contraceptive pills. Now when I say contraceptive pills, 
I am talking about the pills which the doctors prescribe and not just go over the counter and buy something without understanding it. And one of the most misunderstood contraceptive pill is the eye pill. Now because of this eye pill, there are a lot of myths, there are a lot of cases which is going absolutely unnecessary. Eye pill is in demand, yes. And that brings me to my third myth, that eye pill is a contraceptive pill. Eye pill is not a contraceptive pill. Eye pill is an emergency pill. And as the name suggests, it should only be taken in cases of emergency. It cannot be planned that it's okay, I will not use a, a contraceptive, later on we can use an eye pill. No. Also doctors have recommended that eye pills should be taken by women only between the age of 25 and 45. So it is definitely not a good or the best contraceptive for the teenagers. These are hormonal pills. And yes, they, and if you keep continuing using them for a long time, it has its own effect on the women. So it could be menstrual problems or even ovarian damage. A chemist in Delhi made a bold statement requesting all the other chemists in the world and telling them do not sell eye pills to young children because one, of course, they do not understand and secondly, as the doctors recommend, it is not for everybody. So eye pill usage has to come with responsibility. Now one of the reasons eye pill is also in demand is because most of the youth think it is okay if we are having sex during the safe days. And then when somebody realizes maybe it was not my safe day, eye pill comes into the picture. That brings me to my next myth that she will not get pregnant in her safe days. Now these safe days, the understanding of these safe days come from half knowledge through the internet or the peer talks which they themselves don't have any clue. Now when we don't know what exactly the woman's period cycle is, we will not know what her safe days are. So what is generally observed is that the period cycle is of 28 days which makes the 14th day as the ovulation period. 7 days before the period and 7 days after the period are the safe days. But it is observed and known for a fact that a woman's menstrual cycle can range anywhere from 21 days to 35 days. So now imagine if the woman's menstrual cycle is a shorter one and you thought it is a sixth day and she is safe. So exactly once again what you did not want is going to happen here. So a man would think that you know what it is best just not to ejaculate inside the vagina. That brings me to my next myth saying that pulling out ensures no baby. Now pulling out is a process where the man just before he's ejaculating pulls out from the vagina, right? But what we do not realize is there is something called pre-cum. Now what is this pre-cum? Pre-cum is this little liquid that releases itself to lubricate the urethra just before the man is going to ejaculate. So maybe you didn't ejaculate inside the vagina, but if the pre cum was doing its job while you were inside, ta-da! Now what is happening in this changing culture is we are losing out on emotions and commitment. Are you drowning yourself as a youth into this sea of looking cool and calling yourself cool and calling yourself I am not a virgin anymore? just so that to fit into the culture that you think is out there. Just like the girls, even the boys are emotional. They are not thinking about sex all the time. Most of you will agree with me here. What we were taught when we were young as girls was men are dirty. They think about sex all the time. And because of that, we were taught to stay away from the boys. What we exactly was supposed to be taught was the anatomy of our body. What should, what should have been taught to us was the respect for partners. What should have been taught to us is taking and giving consent and the consequences of the actions we take. But what was taught to us? And who will speak to you? 
That brings me to the next, where we think that parents should not talk about sex to their children. This country, India, is the second most populous country in the world. So we know for sure and we can safely say that a lot of it is happening here for sure. <laughs> so the topic may be a taboo, but the act certainly isn't. Now what has happened is, even though the, you know, the British came here with their narrow-mindedness and they not only really ruled us, but they changed our belief also. Otherwise, in a country like India, where sex was studied as science and art, we wouldn't have had perverts roaming around the city and the country raping young children and as young as six months old. Responsibility is a key element, ladies and gentlemen, in any sexual relationship. Responsibility, responsibility to take consent and to give consent. Responsibility to respect our partner's likes and dislikes. And as I said, responsibility to understand our consequences of our actions. I don't have my son here who was supposed to join with me, but he was about nine years old when he asked me the question, Mama, what is sex? And I was not ready. I thought I still have time. And him being an avid reader, I thought he tumbled upon this topic in one of his books. On inquiring, I realized that his peers were talking about it in the classroom. So I knew it's time for me to speak. So as a brave mother, as an educator also, I told him the process of sex. And you can imagine what his reaction was. You, you and dad did it. <laughs> of course, sweetheart, otherwise I wouldn't have had you. That was my antenna right on the top as a mother. I knew exactly what to reply back. But because of my comfort with the subject, and because the tone that I used, and my relaxed body language, it made it easy for us to open this door of communication on topics like sex and sexuality. So yes, it is important for us to educate our children on these topics. Otherwise, where are we getting educated from? Pornography. That brings me to the next, which says that pornography qualifies as sex education. Really? Pornography is an adult movie industry. It is here to decorate people with makeup. There's light, there's camera, there's a director who actually tells them what to do. There's a dubbing studio who makes the sound, it's not them. These actors are given so many takes to make that 30 minute movie. And that 30 minute movie becomes a benchmark for our youth. And when they can't perform the way the 30 minute perform, they think they have some problem. So it is important for us to take this education from pornography and take it to our homes. Now have you seen this movie Shubhmangal Saudan? Yeah? So what happens is the same thing. A novice, new experience, couldn't perform, thought he has erectile dysfunction. These jargons are available on the internet and we all know about them, right? So we go to the doctors also saying that I have erectile dysfunction. We just don't understand it's anxiety. <laughs> so what we need to understand is it's okay, it happens. It happens with most of them who, whose experience is very new. So from taking here, from the pornography, we then move on to understanding of how this can be mastered. So if I have to say with the erectile dysfunction uh, myth that we are talking about, how about understanding how it is actually done? How can I hold my erection for 30 minutes? Practice. And self-control. Yes, and self-control. So when I'm talking about self-control and practice, now here, how will you practice? So I'm giving you a bold statement here today. Practice when you masturbate. Now, you practice when you're masturbating. You don't masturbate to practice. There's a difference. All right? Yes. Very important. Because we don't want to make it a habit. All right? Thank you. So my last one is about masturbation. Now somebody must be wondering, even though you're a doctor, how can you talk about masturbation being a practice girl? Hello? It's a sin. I'll let my sponsor get over. I'll become weak. 
And these are the myths we and a lot of my colleagues have taken upon ourselves to ensure that we break that. Masturbation is okay. Masturbation is normal. Masturbation sometimes is needed. Right? So while we are talking about masturbation, what we need to understand is there is no magic number to this. So if somebody asks me, Yati, how many times can you masturbate? Since so you're saying it's normal and it's okay. How many times can you masturbate in a week? So I will say, keep it only to the times when you really need to. Don't make it your go-to-bed activity. So, you know, I see this youth as my hope. I see this youth breaking the taboos and shattering this silence on the topics of sex and sexuality with responsibility. I see this youth as keep making a safe, a less casual, and a more responsible sexual environment. I see this youth as future to take sexuality education as any other life skills. I see this youth as hope. Thank you so much.